The Abbey building comfortably shapes this town of Romsey. It has its international admirers, but a very Hampshire character. It feels small, but it's full of life. As a local, I enjoy the place and its people. Outrun the pause of reason. So much fun working with professionals again. There are many fine buildings in and around Romsey, but perhaps none houses such an unexpected group of people as here on the site of the old horse fair. <laughs> Thierry's wine and food company has over 20 employees, and nearly half are French. What we're trying to do there is keep that the French way. So we got this, uh, we try to have a lunch all together. We got a cook and uh, she provides lunch for us. And we sit all together. You see, it's a large table like in family. Sometimes we would start, you know, some conversation in French and end up in English. In keeping with such continental habits, Thierry's plays host to many of the largest winemakers in the world. And all the high street supermarkets come here to taste and buy from Thierry's selection of wines. Inevitably, we end up in a situation where they'll taste number one and number three, and they'll say, could we have 40% of number one and 60% of number two? And we say, of course. Why not, if that's what you yeah. want? In other words, being able to give them precisely what they want is something that these people in Romsey have been able to do. How did you find out that here in Romsey was this little centre that... It, it is a big centre that could... Dominate this market. Well, well I'd like you to meet. I'd like you to meet him right here. <laughs> no, it's uh, where's the company in Rosie? When Cherry started 20 years ago, that was in London. Mm -hmm. And he decided after a while to do what we were doing, which is selling mainly to you know, the supermarkets, fashion carries, and the off-license. Uh, we didn't need to be in London. We could do it just as well from outside. They're well enough known as uh, as people who understand the market and who are wine experts, English wine experts, that. Uh, an operation like ours is almost a natural affinity with what they're doing. I mean, we, if, they're, if they're saying, we need some new world wines, what's California doing? Our company, you know, Stratford in a situation is, in this situation, is a fit. It's a natural fit. Another French connection is La Sagesse Convent in the town centre. Today, with more lay teachers than nuns, this order is the last link with a religious past that goes back hundreds of years. For Romsey Abbey was, by the 10th century, established as a major monastery of nuns, and its abbess a hugely powerful landlord. This Benedictine community fostered the development of a thriving market in the town. The abbey has many royal connections. King Alfred's granddaughter was an abbess. Henry I's wife was brought up there. But by the time of Henry VIII's dissolution of the churches, the nunnery no longer held the power it once had. In 1544, the town was offered the great Norman buildings for just £100. And in a document signed by Henry VIII, the sale went ahead. The River Test has always been a source of wealth. The medieval town gained much from the salmon and trout that were then plentiful in these chalk waters. Today, the river has to be carefully managed, and Bernard Aldridge is someone who has spent his working life on the Broadlands estate. What we normally do, David, at the end of every season, um, we cut all the weed back hard. Yeah. And this is to let the water go when we get floods. So we can hop in here. I think... <laughs> I'll follow you, don't worry. Okay. There we are. Okay. Right then. I'm going to try and come to join here. Off you do. Without too much disaster. <laughs> It's a yeah, lovely feeling. No trouble at all. Lovely feeling. Lovely feeling. This is not your average uh, <laughs> city path, is it? No, it isn't. But of course, the weed is essential to the life of the river. Because it holds all the life, holds the shrimps and the fly life. Without the weed, the river dies. Without the weed, the river dies, exactly. But too much weed? Too much weed, the river chokes. 
Now, Bernard, you've been on this river, or in this river, for what, 38 years now? 38 years, yes. Almost man and boy, that, man isn't it? Man and fish. <laughs> the history of the river is mm -hmm. the history of Romsey. I mean, the, yes. the town was based on the river, wasn't it? Well, Romsey's built on about seven little streams. And this is where the Broadlands piece of the test is unique, in that it's we have got here the whole test in one channel. And it's the only part of the test where it is in one channel. You go above Romsey, it splits, subdivides, turns into a million streams. Um, finding it is quite difficult, mm. especially if you fly over it and look down. It looks just like an octopus of water. How, how important is the survival of Broadlands to the survival of Romsey? Oh, I think it's desperately important. When you think that, Rum, that the Broadlands estate is really the only buffer between Southampton and Romsey. If you took away the estate, Romsey will be swallowed up in five minutes flat. It's been described to me as you know, the fishing capital of England, is that right? Well, we like to think so. It's, um, it's certainly the mecca of fishermen the world over. This is where we're very fortunate in that we, we meet people who are coming out to enjoy themselves. They might be very nasty in their businesses, but um, when they're on the riverbank, they're all nice people. And uh, most of them obey the rules and, and do things properly. The gentlemen of the river. Absolutely. Well, I think we're the workers of the river. We're the so workers we, of the river and uh, we're slacking to, desperately. We'll try and do some work before it's okay. too late. Off we go then. <laughs> before our feet freeze. <laughs> Back on the land, there is another story. The revival of a pig not seen since medieval times. Sam's idea is to try crossing a wild boar with an ordinary pig because modern pork was, was getting to such a bad state, it didn't taste of anything. And what we didn't realise at the time was that we were actually recreating the Hampshire hog, uh, which roamed in the forests in Hampshire hundreds of years ago. They are a wild animal, they are dangerous, and uh, so the idea is to build up a trust with them so they'll let you go in their field and handle them uh, and get to know that you're the one that brings them food each day. In creating this pork farm business, Helen Sutherland had one great qualification, no farming experience. My background was in advertising, further than sausage making, I don't suppose you can imagine. It was just simply through, uh, through necessity. We had the meat and needed to uh, be able to sell it in as many ways as possible. So a friend showed me how to, to bone out a carcass and uh, from that my cook's instincts, I suppose, took over and I decided to try and take it on to the next stage to process it to make sausages. Who do you sell most of this meat to? We sell to a lot of chefs in London. Um, quite a few chefs in Hampshire too, um, through stairs the butchers in Romsey. It is becoming clear that Romsey is something of a foodie centre. There is no shortage of restaurants. And here at the old manor house, owner and chef Mauro Bregoli has created a pretty fierce reputation in the kitchen. Hey Mauro! Nice to see hey, you. Kidding nice me out, I've got you. my whites on. <laughs> Marvellous. You, you, you look better than cricket, don't you? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> Listen. They're, they're cleaner. What we're doing now, we're making cotechino, which is a typical salami of the north of Italy. I, I'll show you what, you, what, what we're okay, doing. No, and, and you can give me on. Uh, the idea is to put, you put your meat or the meat mixer into the machine. You turn the handle of the machine while you press down your mixer and I'll handle the actual skin. Well, it looks good to me. I like to cook the old type of food. Well, you do pastas uh, as well, of course. Yes, yes, pastas. Now, is it uh, true? No, tell me, is it true you actually send to Italy for the eggs it for is. your pasta? It is. We told you that. What's yes, wrong, it what's is. Wrong, what's wrong with our good old English eggs? What's wrong they're with marvelous. our English chicken? They're marvelous. And they're marvelous. Beautiful. Yeah? English eggs. Fresh, lovely, with bacon, but not with pasta. Not with pasta. Yeah, so no, use Italian what's, eggs what's, to make proper missing, pasta. No, what's missing? What's missing? Actually, just a second. Oh, sorry. What's missing? What's missing on the English eggs is is the color. Mm. I mean, the, the, you know that food is also eaten with your eyes, and it's, when you yes. make when you make uh, pasta with Italian eggs, I mean, the soap is yellow, really bright yellow, mm. almost orange in color. Come on, then, put some yeah. more in. Yes, boss. Running out of meat. That's yeah. it. Have you done this job before? Uh, not often. You should have. You made yourself a name. <laughs> is it hard on your on your arm? No, no, nothing, no, 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 no problems. It's nothing like batting no, the seven hours. Yeah, you've got a 
sweet. That's your huh? natural rhythm. <laughs> now simmer your cotechino for about five hours. Cut into generous slices and serve with freshly cooked brown lentils. Ah. Voilà. The finished article. Cotechino. Hey, Con lenticchie. Looks like this pig's had a bit of trouble underneath it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I must try this. Let's, let's do this properly. You work hard enough for it. Mm -hmm. A moment of truth. Nice hot. I know where this came from. <laughs> See, this is almost bliss. We've got a nice bottle of red wine. We've got some cotechino. Perfect surroundings. Almost makes you wonder, you know, what is the perfect answer to life? Being in Romsey. Romsey is certainly attractive to strangers. There's plenty of us happy foreigners who love the town. But what do the locals think? Where better than the town's own newspaper to find out? Oh, good morning. It's the editor, morning. please. Yes, that's me, Terry Viney. Oh, good morning. There we go. Please. Terry Viney was born here yeah. and has worked on the Romsey advertiser for 37 years. With his deputy, Alan Wiltshire, only 12 years on the paper, they must know of an issue that will demonstrate how much Romsonians themselves care about their town. Mm, well, what about that horse trough in the um, corn market? Well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's been taking a lot of stick lately from motorists who back into it, and they've moved it back off its plinth. And I don't think it's going to be very long before it gets broken, which would be a shame, because it's been there since 1886. It might be an idea to find out what people outside think. Do you know what this is behind you? Uh, no. Do you realise this is a part of Rums's history? It's a, a horse trough and, din and drinking fountain from 1886. Ah. Do you mm. like history? Yeah. yeah so good. do you think you'd, we ought to keep this in good repair and make sure it's looked after and doesn't get knocked over by traffic? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think all monuments should be kept. And the nice little things like that, they make the character of the town, don't they? Of course they do. Do you know what this is behind us? Not specifically, but I would imagine it's a part of old Romsey. Yeah. Do you think we ought to be spending time to make sure that little monuments like this are preserved and looked after? Oh, yes, definitely. Very much in favour of the history of the town being preserved? Yes, certainly. You like it exactly as it is? No, not as it is, but preserve it What would you like, uh, what would you like, to, see, what would you like <laughs> to see different? I think a bypass, the main thing. Get the, the heavy traffic out of Romsey. So I mean, question? we're losing it too quickly nowadays. All these little bits like that which nobody notices, but once they've gone, they're gone. They're irreplaceable. Romsey has undoubtedly enjoyed a prosperous past. While it took the side of Cromwell and saw several nights of plunder during the Civil War, its buildings and people survived well. The cloth trade provided its wealth until the 18th century, when new business in grain milling and brewing took over. One building which has stood for rather less time found new life 10 years ago. The plaza was another dead cinema when local amateurs bought it. I and since murder's too terrible for the year, the time has been, the brains were out. They have turned it into a successful theatre, with six full-scale productions a year and a thriving costume hire business. To those that know me. We're just attendants and children of Dar, but we don't have to say anything. What do you have to do? We just have to stand around and serve all the meals in the banquet scene and give them drinks. We thirst and all to all. The Romsey Amateur Operatic and Dramatic Society, Rayods to Insiders, is unnervingly professional and always has been, packing them in since 1934. Do any of the actors actually get carried away in their roles <laughs> without looking at Peter? <laughs> I don't know, I think we haven't caught anybody murdering anybody. No, I don't we? think we... No, we haven't caught anyone acting either, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't catch anyone in Waitrose going through their part, hacking away oh, the Peter, cucumber Peter on Peter was caught going into school the other morning, <laughs> practicing his lines. <laughs> lady thought I was mad because, I mean, I stopped the car and, uh, you know, she was looking at me and she was stuck in traffic just looking at me. And I was going... Oh. Abort! It quit my sight! Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold! You may or may not have noticed that I'm, um, I'm quite tall. I'm 5 foot 11. And um, I was really worried at the audition because most of the men that, that were there auditioning for Macbeth were like only just as tall as me or maybe a little bit taller. So I was quite glad when I heard that Peter was around and that he was at 6'2". It's quite nice. <laughs> this is Am Dram with a difference. 
borne out by the membership. It costs £15 a year, and no one gets to play without auditioning. If you can make sure you have a few laughs and get in the bar afterwards and have a drink and joke about what went right, what went wrong, then it's enjoyable. People like coming along to rehearsals and they always work harder if they're enjoying themselves. But there is another bunch of thespians in town. These could be known as the King's Markham players. Thank you very much. Thank you. I went along to an ordinary front room in Romsey to meet this group. Here were those stalwarts of television drama, the extras, who along with Romsey itself were the backdrop for the Inspector Wexford series. And Colin Lucy. Oh, full cast. Full cast. Full cast. Yeah, full cast. That's right. <laughs> so is this like a little club then? Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just fun, yeah. To watch, um, and see how it all happens, really. That's what I found very interesting, and seeing the stars in the flesh. <laughs> Do I really look like a waiter? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, how have you caught the Venus Cunningham? You'll keep walking. It's like you walk on. There's the wrong cocktail. They were the only ones that got the complete cocktail. Wrong cocktail. We got the odds and ends. What do you actually talk about then when you're in the back of a scene like this? Remind me. Remind me. No sound. No sound. And the same food all day. It makes it much more difficult because you're pretending to talk and not talking and it's very difficult not to start laughing or smirking. And Brian hit his avocado and shouldn't have done. <laughs> there we are. There we are. It was Gus's idea. It has been Gus's evening. Gus is back in. Quite right, Reg. We still quote bits of this script. <laughs> Quite right, Reg. Right, right, <laughs> That's good, isn't it? That's long line. <laughs> Does it actually change the way that you watch television after you've been in? After you've been yes. in? Yes. Really, yes. Yes. We, we look at yes, the you extras. Watch the extras. <laughs> <laughs> we watch the extras. <laughs> More on the film. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not Desmond. I don't hazard a guess. Probably that gentleman over there. Where was this shot, this scene? It was actually in, a, in the sort of annex to Langston House, wasn't it? Not the main yeah, dining room. It's sort of a barn that they yeah. made into a restaurant. I should have recognised it, actually. It's where we had our wedding reception. Wow, <laughs> you were probably there. But, <laughs> we, we had a few extras that day as well. David? <laughs> 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 Next, I was off to find someone I knew had plenty of local connections and runs a rather unusual business from his home. Ah, oh, there you are. Ah, oh, David, just a chap. I've got somebody coming. Look at the cars. I want a hand to get some of them out. Well, I could be your man. You are. Like any good salesman, David Howard always likes to keep a little mystery about his business. So who are the people you end up selling to mainly? People like you, sort of young men with a lot of money, you know. Or you old have, retired have one, chaps. Like, old retired chaps like me, you see, who want something to do in their dotage. And uh, a lot of retired people, actually, um, I suppose, don't want to sit around drinking and knitting, and they're little old couples buy a, buy a car. Or they've always thought of having an old car, a vintage car. Or it takes them back, you see. It takes them back to their childhood. What's your official role in Romsey? I haven't got an official role. I'm just the vice chairman of the, the Romsey Working Men's Conservative Club. And people rather laugh at the sort of working men and conservative club put together, but we, we all do, do a job of work, I suppose. But it's a very exclusive club, isn't it? Well, it's not, uh, it's not that exclusive now, because we let, we've, we've let women in as well, you see. We were a long time. We were, um, uh, I think, almost unique in the country in, 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 not letting, uh, in not having women in there. But they're allowed into part of the club now. They're, they're associate members, so they can come in. There are still holy of holies, like the sort of billiard, the snooker room, where um, they, 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 they don't go in that side. But once a year, they go in for a Christmas draw. <laughs> <laughs> they must feel very privileged when they do. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yes, very privileged. Yeah. 
But today's visitor, George Baker, is no stranger to these parts or that of Inspector Wexford. George, you've been associated with Romsey in a fictional part for many years. How strong are your real ties to the town? I don't think there's many pubs that I haven't been in. So, uh, from reality, yes. The fictional side of, uh, of the life here uh, sometimes got mixed up because, you know, they'd see me walking about and I was actually in a scene and they'd stop me and have a chat. And I'd say, no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It's, it's not me. No, it's not me. It's no, someone not me. else, yes. No, not me, yeah. And, of course, they used to get very cross because the accent changed because, of course, you know, Inspector Waxford talks like that. And then they'd come and say, why aren't you talking like that? What's the matter with you? Do you think uh, the, the Romsey people actually quite like their little bit of fame that comes through the television? Yes, I think they probably do. I think they probably enjoyed it. Yes. yes. I think it brought quite a little bit of money. And I was very startled the other day. I was in Romsey doing my shopping at Waitrose, uh, a long way from Devizes, but there it is. And um, <coughs> some Canadians stopped me. And they said, it is, is it? Is it? And I said, yes, <laughs> it may, may be. Who do you think it is? You see? They said, we've come all the way from Canada to Romsey to see the town where it was made. And fancy meeting you here. It's just extraordinary really, to come all the way from Canada on holiday. And apparently quite a lot of people do. While their visitors haven't travelled that far, the Women's Institute Market is so famous that it attracts a queue each Friday morning. Its sale of homemade and homegrown produce attracts regulars from towns as far away as Portsmouth and Bournemouth. I never quite figured it out. I wouldn't stand out there in the cold. <laughs> but they do, and uh, I think perhaps that's part of the Friday morning, standing in a queue and talking to their friends. <laughs> Same cake every week. Yes, yes, yes. I have yes. a bit cooking every week. You <laughs> see, she goes mad yes. with yes. a every week. See, yes. Is that the one? That's it. This is a chance to buy preserves, vegetables, angel cakes, woolen socks. Indeed, any quality item that any gran or mum has ever been known to make. There's even a store where regulars can place and collect their orders, and it's needed. This WI market starts play at ten and is all out by 11. We've got, my sister's coming this weekend, so let's pick up that news. <laughs> so, oh, that's <laughs> easy to please then. I come in every week practically, and then I, on certain weeks, I order particular items, you know, such as two of these lettuce jam tarts and an apple tart. That'll last a couple of weeks, and next week I come in and get fruit cake or whatever. Is that the same lady makes the both she makes, she makes most of the produce that I buy, yeah. Not in love with her, are you? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, since I lost my wife, the only way I can get home cooking is by coming into the Women's Institute here and buying it home cooked. Romsey's attractions are those of a traditional country town. And in time honoured fashion, I ended my journal with local colleagues in the pub. I'm not sure how many of them were actually sort of guilt ridden enough that they, they in fact had uh, backed into it at some stage. But most of them said, yes, of course, we must look after the fabric of the town, mm -hmm. must look after the history of the town. Which I suppose it's quite a good sign. True, absolutely. Uh, what would Romsey be without its history? It would be some other amorphous mess. One thing I want to ask, yeah. which has been puzzling me the two years that I've actually lived in or around Romsey, is what is the correct pronunciation? I have always said Romsey. There are those locals who always say it's Rumsey. And the Rumsey, they say, goes back to the old uh, Saxon spelling, R-U-M-S-E-G-I-N-E. -E. Um, you pay your money and you take your choice, I think, David. There are those of us who say Romsey and those of us who say Rumsey. But in any event, it's a wonderful place to live in. Right here, driver.